If we multiply two or more decision variables, the model is nonlinear. We will now discuss how such products can be formulated in linear form. Let's start with two binary variables, y and z. Assume that we face a model where we need to compute a product, that is y times z. The question is if there is an approach to formulate this linearly. Obviously, the result is either 0 or 1. Hence, we can introduce a new binary variable, say x. The expression y times z can be replaced by x if we can somehow achieve that the value of x equals y times z. The idea to solve this puzzle is the following. As an intermediate step, we can state that if y equals 1 and z equals 1, then x should equal 1. And if y equals 0 or z equals 0, then x should equal 0. Now we can use techniques, which are discussed in a previous video, to transform these implications into a linear form. I recommend that you try it and pause the video now. The result would be the following. This completes our task. It is interesting though to note that the domain of x need not be binary. It would be sufficient to have x greater than or equal to 0, since y and z are binary. This, by the way, is a good piece of advice in many settings. If you have the choice, and it makes no difference whether you use real valued variables or integer valued variables, you should use real valued variables. This has to do with the way such models can be solved, which is out of the scope of this video series. Mentioning integers, it is sometimes a good idea to have integer decision variables with more than just two values being possible. We will come to that in later videos on integer decision variables. For the time being, it might be interesting to note that every non-negative integer can be represented by powers of 2 in the following manner. n denotes a non-negative integer value, and the ni's are unique numbers equal to 0 and 1. k is some large enough index. This can be generalized to a broader set of integers that includes negative numbers bounded from below by a negative number, say b. A possibly negative value n can then be written like this. As before, the ni's are unique values equal to 0 or 1. We can now think of decision variables, say y and z, which represent integer values. If we, more or less, copy the notation from above, we could write y is equal to by plus
this time, the yi's and the zi's are to be seen as binary decision variables that are used to model integer decision variables. All this might help to derive a linear model in cases where we are formulating a model and a product of two integer variables occurs. We can then substitute y and z with the lengthy expressions from above. The expansion of this product leads to an expression with several products of two binary decision variables. This can be brought into a linear form as described above. It should be emphasized that this approach shows one way to handle integer decision variables, but on the downside it creates a large number of binary decision variables. For this reason, modeling integers via binary variables won't be appropriate in many settings. Let's now turn towards a situation where we have a binary decision variable y and a real value decision variable z. Note that a non-negative variable z is without loss of generality as shown in a previous video on model transformations. Recall that any real valued variable can be replaced by two non-negative real valued variables if necessary. Again, we are interested in the product of these two variables. Since the result is a real value, it's straightforward to introduce a real value decision variable x to replace the product. If y equals 0, then x must be 0. This can be achieved with a big M formulation as shown in a previous video. Furthermore, x cannot be greater than z, which is easy to formulate. The trick is to add another constraint that makes sure that x cannot be smaller than z if y equals 1. Now that we have discussed the product of two binary variables, the product of two integer variables modeled by binary variables, and the product of one binary and one real valued variable, it remains to discuss the product of two real valued variables. But this will be postponed and discussed in a later video on approximating nonlinear functions. For the sake of completeness, we will just mention here that the product of two real valued variables is not easy to express in a linear way. We will learn later that we can try to approximate this product in a linear fashion though. As a final remark, it should be noted that products of more than two variables can be handled recursively in the way shown here. Consider, for example, the following product. In the ideal case, the decision variables z are all binary, or only one of them is real valued and all other ones are binary. You can then repeatedly apply the techniques above to pairs of them to bring this product into a linear form. Note that you have choices when grouping them into pairs.